Boss Audio has a bad reputation. They're known for plastering huge, unrealistic power numbers on all their packaging and stamping those numbers on their amplifiers. But here's a Boss amp that I have never seen before. It's got a different layout with all the connections on one end. This is the Onyx series OX3KD. Is this the new boss or is this more of the same? Let's hook it up and find out. Before we do that, we've got to unbox it. So let's take a look at what's inside the box. It's another box. They always put boxes inside of boxes. Like most amplifiers, it's got some mounting screws and there is a base knob. It's made out of plastic. That doesn't bother me. It bothers some people. And it looks like instead of screws to mount the base knob, it does have some 3M double-sided tape so you can stick this to whatever you want in your car and then hope the double-sided tape doesn't fall off. The amp itself looks kind of cool. I do like the fake Allen screws around the top of the amp. I think that gives it a cool industrial look. The logo does light up when you power the amplifier on. There are a pair of 30 amp fuses inside the box. Let's call that foreshadowing. As I said before, all of the connections and the controls are on the same side of the amplifier. I like that. It gives you some different mounting options. Going along the amplifier, let's see what we've got. It starts off with a power and a protect light. And then there is a data link. That right there is a link for strapping the amplifier. And beside that, there's a switch for bridge mode. You can choose either master or slave. And that is again for strapping the amplifier. This inexpensive little amplifier is strappable. So that's kind of cool. Beside that you have an input mode, either low or high level. What's going on here is it doesn't have a different input for high or low level. It just has one set of RCAs. There's no speaker inputs on it, but you can hit that switch and that RCA becomes speaker level inputs. So you can just connect the RCAs and use the low level input mode, or you can solder some RCA pigtails to your speaker uh, outputs from say a factory head unit. And then you can use that with the high level mode. In fact, I'll give you a link down in the description to some pigtails that I like to use. There is uh, an input level control right here as well. Again, that's your gain control. And there is an output. If you want to hook multiple amplifiers together that are not strapped, that's the output for that. After that, we have our low pass crossover. So this does have uh, the infrasonic and the low pass, which is a good extra feature, especially for an inexpensive amplifier. There is a bass boost and of course a phase switch. The next thing we have is a plug for the remote subwoofer control. This is where your bass knob plugs in. And right beside that is a single pair of speaker output terminals. And after that, of course, we have our <laughs> a pair of 30 amp fuses. And then of course the usual battery positive remote and then ground connection. So you can hook this thing up to you know, the electrical system in your car or on the test bench, which is what we're gonna do now. So let's go right into a four ohm load test and let's see if this thing will give us 3000 watts. Come on boss, I'm rooting for you. The 1% THD light comes on at about 223 watts, which is far short of the 3000 watts slathered all over the side of the box. So uh, that's a bad sign, boss. I don't think you're gonna be able to get 3000 watts. Are any of you actually surprised by that? <laughs> Let's wind it up to clipping and see what we get. We get 229 watts at clipping. Now the other thing boss is known for is not only is putting huge numbers on the outside of the box, are also known for giving wildly inaccurate ratings. So what we do now is we crack open the manual and we see what the actual ratings are in the manual, which are the ones that are supposed to be reliable. Now, of course, you don't know what the ratings are in the manual until you buy it and crack it open. So that's kind of dirty, boss. You shouldn't do that. Well, okay, it's rated for 230 watts into four ohms. And so it missed it by a little bit and that's not too bad. There's tons of reasons why it may have missed it. For example, I'm not showing you my input voltage. So if my input voltage has sagged, it could be my fault that the amp didn't do its rated power at four ohms. Let's try two ohms. So we end up with about 360 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion. Now I would have loved to have seen it a little bit closer to the rating of 390. Let's go ahead and see what it does at clipping. I'm getting about 394 watts. So yes, at clipping, this appears to be giving the rated power. So hey boss, not too bad. Now we're gonna wire up a one ohm test.
and we get 475 watts, which is nowhere near the 600 watts uh, that the manual says we should get. Crank it up to clipping and we get Five hundred and seventy-four watts, so a little bit short of the rated power at one ohm. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that doing rated power doesn't really mean anything to me. Boss could have just called this a five hundred watt amplifier, and then we'd all be bragging about our awesome Boss system that gives us more power than the ratings are on the amplifier, and then Boss could charge fifty more bucks for it. So. To me, what really matters is two things. It's the long-term reliability of the amplifier and what is the price per watt. So Boss has been around forever. They have a good warranty and their stuff actually does last for quite a long time. So from a long-term reliability standpoint, there's nothing wrong with the Boss amplifier. The problem is the dollars per watt. Parts Express sells this amplifier. You can find it on their website for 158 bucks. And if you check my blog, I always keep Parts Express coupons on the blog so you can get 15 bucks off of it. So that brings the amp price to about $143. It's a tad cheaper on Amazon. So depending if you want to use the clipping number or the 1% THD number, this thing is giving you somewhere around 25 cents per watt to 30 cents per watt, which is actually kind of pricey in this day and age. And that's the real area where Boss falls down. I'm also more concerned with real world power versus power into a resistor because subwoofers aren't just plain old resistors. So I always do a reactive load test anytime that I can. So we're going to try that right now. I'm going to skip the 4 ohm and go right to a 2 ohm test. I've got a kicker comp R subwoofer. All of the subwoofers I use for my test are linked down in the description for your convenience. So on the kicker with the 2 ohm low, we end up with 238 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion. And then we get 251 watts at clipping. Gonna switch now to a Sundown Audio subwoofer in a down for sound profab enclosure. And we end up with really similar numbers to the kicker. 235 watts at 1% total harmonic distortion and about 270 watts at clipping. What I'd like to do is show you the information and then let you make your own decision with your own money. And for some people, the boss is gonna be the choice that they'll make because it is a brand that's been around for a long time and you know, has a good warranty. And if you would like to help me make videos like these, you can click right down here. That'll take you to my Patreon page and you can join these guys right here. These are my $10 patrons. And I wanna give a special shout out to $25 patrons, Dylan, Bo, and Baba. I'm Justin, AKA the DIY Audio Guy, and I will see you on the next adventure.